on a Thursday night and you're tuned in to Rip Radio Network, which can mean one and only thing. There you go. It's Chip Chat. Welcome to Chip Chat, everybody. I'm Chip. Who are you, Tez? I'm Tez. You just That's told me. That's right. <laughs> okay. We're talking really fast because this is about to be the fastest show I think we've ever done. Yep. Time, and time and that's on. already pretty fast. It's already one minute is over. It's right. We've <laughs> lost time. Okay. Okay. America is currently battling Britain in curling, nice. men's curling. So Very on. important. America's one and one right now. I don't care what Britain's uh, record is, but they're going to lose. Uh, Schuster actually made a shot earlier today, which is very rare. He sucks. He's our skip. This is his fifth okay. Olympics. That's how bad he sucks. Okay. Um, also, in other news, the world's about to be on fire, but not yet because Vladdy likes watching the Olympics. Yeah, you, first of all, you can't upstage your friends. Right. This is like some, like, if you took it to, like, I guess, like, Instagram or something. That's like, right. You might have the photo that you want to post, you, but you, you got to let the other person probably put it up first, and then you kind of. Winnie the Pooh needs his time. <laughs> Christ. And, uh, you know, Vladdy's giving it to That is a really inside politics joke. Dad, you have to know a lot of stuff to know why that's funny. You can't even say that. But it's very funny. It is. You know, and I can only imagine. I can imagine, like, with all the power that he has, if, like, you might be The original A.A. A. Milne books just became public domain because it's been enough time oh, since wow. the copyrights. So I'm sort of interested to see how that plays out in Mandarin. Ooh. Ouch. I hope I didn't just get uh, various people killed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we we are broadcasting live from the studio. We were, we were remote briefly yeah, we're for a briefly. little while, uh, but we're back. Uh, we're back for the second time. Yeah. As, but the first time we're on, on somebody else's show. Our own show. Yeah. We're After, back without the sunlight. Yes. It's very that jarring. Was, yeah. Dude, it can't no more damn. Shout out to the Hangout Podcast, yes, thank you by the way. Go, go listen to their show. They're on on Sundays. Uh, they made us come here in the daytime. Uh, I, I know. I was worried I was going to melt or something. Dude, I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I what have no relationship to this whole studio or this whole area. In, in the, the sun. Day. Yeah. Wait till it's summertime and then, you know, it's like really still light. Cold. Oh, yeah. That's till a like 9 30 when we're a, on. Yeah. Good point. Twilight. Okay. Uh,. We we were hiding though, of course, from the dangerous soup Nazis. The whole ice, you see, I had to let you know they're out here. Yeah, no soup for you <laughs> or Marjorie. Later, more on that. In list time, we do have a packed show. We had an invited guest. We did, but we had to. We we gave him the night off. You know who it was? Who? Joe Burrow. He was <laughs> oh, yes. going to be here, but he's yes. working on his life size sculpture of Harambe, which is what he said he's playing the Super Bowl for. I'm not making that up. Uh, hold on. This is, this is true? This is true. <laughs> yes, Joe Burrow said that they want to win one for Harambe. And uh, breaking news. <laughs> That's true. Uh, also, apparently the food bank that he said he won his Heisman for back in Ohio has seen a record bunch of donations ahead of this Super Bowl. So, yeah. Hey. Ohio <laughs> accidentally doing good stuff. Dave Chappelle, call me. Oh, we have a conversation. Oh I, my lord! Yeah, I that, hope to God I wasn't. <laughs> oh, I wasn't ready to talk that today. I hope to God you're upset about the right part of that thing <laughs> and not the wrong part of that thing. As I tell so many of my friends and family, as I grow old as a black person, I just hope not to just drift into these full-on, uh, you know, conservative his, views. His moco is showing. A little bit. A little. Like, NIMBY. come on. NIMBY. It's affordable housing. Right. <laughs> I'm hoping he's no, upset no. about the other part <laughs> of the development being sprawly and nasty and awful. He's and coming out on that to next be a special. bit better. Yeah, I thought I didn't hate poor, uh, poor people. <laughs> you thought I like poor people? Me? You know that's how he's starting his next special, yeah? Listen. <laughs> Woo! Ronald Reagan Chappelle <laughs> <laughs> should have never given you a couch. All right. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, we got all that going on. A lot. We've got a rundown. We've got uh, maybe a couple rundowns. I don't know. We yeah. have a lot of stuff. We are going to go fast. We're already going fast. Yeah, exactly. Thanks to the Hop Slam. Thanks to the Hop Slam. Yeah. Shout out to Bells. Shout out to Bells. Good Michigan Brewery. Yeah. Good I, folks I, up there. I love this stuff. I didn't at first. Oh. 
Oh, I have a real bell. Go oh, blue. I missed that one. <laughs> All right, uh, you got your word. He's yes, thinking. okay. I do. You've got your word. Yep, I've got my word. So, uh, <clears throat> sit back, grab some men's rea. It's borscht time. You're listening to the best show, the only show, Chip Chat on Rip Radio Network. Sweeps. <laughs> Here on Rip Radio Network, I am your host, Chip. With me is Tez. What's up, Uh I want to highlight uh, briefly our outfits tonight for those of uh, people watching on the video so you can see. I want to I want to point out that, uh, as per usual, I am dressed like a, a dad who accidentally forgot that he had a PTA meeting. Uh, and, and I'm overdressed. I'm overdressed. And for Tess the PTA looks like he just came from work <laughs> with Tiger Woods on his shirt somehow. Yeah, you know, that's, that's right. that is Tiger, is it, it is not? Tiger. Yes. It's like <laughs> yes. easily recognizably Tiger. It's yeah. the red shirt, of course. It's the red shirt. That's course. right. That's the thing. <laughs> exactly. It's the course. red shirt. Uh, uh, I am wearing one of my curling jerseys. I saw it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, from my, uh, I want to shout out to my, my team back at Potomac Curling Club, uh, like Sweep to the Slaughter. Uh, the happy sheeps on the front and yep, we've dead got, sheeps on the back. Yep, yep. Uh, so you guys out, out, out there and uh, good curling. Okay. This week we learned we learned that Georgia will never stop being Georgia. You know why we always talk about education on this show? Uh, yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene. I got to say, probably the best thing to happen to Democrats <laughs> since Lauren Boebert. <laughs> just say it. Okay. I want to just go, like, there's two things that people need to know before we get into this story in case they are not so well-versed in the history. Yes. Yes. Okay. Break down the history for us. The first thing to know is what a gulag is. A gulag was a Soviet, mm -hmm. which is communist prison okay it's a gulag i had various family members who got locked up in gulags these were the old prisons that the czar had and then when the soviets came they just reused the same prison it's still called a gulag it is soviet it's russian cool yes. everybody good okay over in nazi germany they had a secret police they were called the gestapo right and a lot of people who sort of use Gestapo as a shorthand for sort of goose-stepping fascists, right? It's a, definitely a common word in punk music and all this kind of stuff, right? Okay. Those are the two things that people need to know. We are going to play you a short clip of, I'm not making this up, an elected official saying a thing. Oh, I should point out maybe there's a third thing people need to know. Yeah. There is a kind of soup. Yes, that's a good point. Yes, the, There is a kind of soup called gazpacho. It's from Spain. It is made of tomatoes and some other stuff, but mostly tomatoes, and it's cold. It's not hot soup. It's cold soup. It's sort of like runny salsa, if you want to say uh, that. That's a good man. Yeah. Jose Andres, please don't yeah, get it. Yes, don't know. Okay. <laughs> but we're talking to Americans here, so they don't know. Fair. Gazpacho is it's delicious. It's really good. With, like, nice toast and stuff. It's fantastic. Okay. We are going to play you this thing that was uttered by an elected official in public into a microphone that she then posted it on, like, the Internet, which I hear is forever. Lives forever. Did you know about the Internet? Yeah, It's kind of new. Al Gore made it? Al Gore, yeah. Okay. Brian, play us this video, please. Have the DC, DC jail, jail, which is the DC gulag, but now we have Nancy Pelosi's gazpacho police spying on members of Congress, spying on the legislative work that we do, spying on our staff, and spying on American citizens uh, that want to come home. If you heard that correctly, she said gazpacho police. 
Yes. Predictably, of course, the internet had a lot of fun with this. So for our list time tonight, we are going to indulge you, the listeners, in some of the internet's finest responses to some of the internet's finest responses. <laughs> I don't even know what to think about this. I'm not going to like analyze it. No, because yeah, you can't give it too much air on that point. But I want to. I want to like accidentally say, intentionally accidentally say, credit to her because she did follow up with a tweet about that uh, she should be thrown in the goulash. <laughs> Oh, she did? So she's aware she's of aware. how ridiculous okay. this is. You big dummy. Right. <laughs> so we have here collected some of the Internet's best responses on this very subject. Uh, I don't know. If, did you get the, the actual uh, clips, Brian? The tweets? Okay. Well, let's go ahead. You want to take the first one there, uh, Tez? Uh, yeah, let's go. What is? The, uh, so we have, I've met some members of the... Gazpacho, is that the Gazpacho, the Gazpacho police? police. Make yep. sure I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and they have what is it? Is this consomme? Consomme. Consomme. Consomme is a kind of soup. Soup. Yes, I'm not familiar with consomme. Consomme what is, what type is, of soup is, is a this? clarified uh, broth. So you can have chicken consomme. You can have tomato consomme. Okay. Uh, it shows up in uh, some interesting rap lyrics too. So, so they are a, yeah. a consomme professional. Consomme professional. <laughs> That's it's really good. Yes. Uh, I won't get into how that works. That's what my culinary education is for. There you go. That's true. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, she has more. This this lady was killing it. Uh, Danielle Decker uh, Jones. She's she's amazing. Uh, although some say they have a wanton disregard <laughs> for safety. Wontons, of course, of being course. This, yeah Chinese yeah. soup. Yeah, that's good. All okay, right, go ahead. Going on, uh, uh, especially their controversial. Stop the bisque. Stop and bisque. So oh, excuse me. Stop and bisque program. Yes. The the, uh, the, the hop slams are already yeah. sneaking up on us early. Stop and bisque. <laughs> stop and bisque. Sounds delicious. That does. Yeah. Just, just stop every doing yeah. and eat some bisque. Get over here. <laughs> Try some of this crab bisque. You know what? That might be a way for the That's police. Community police. Yeah, your community That's police right. is right there. <laughs> Check this out. Okay. Would you like uh, some? Stop. Have some of this crab bisque. No thanks, officer. I have my own crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I am not proud of that. <laughs> I like that. But I'm also very proud of that. Nope. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> sure, the gazpacho police are bad, but the elite Vichyssoise inspired puree terror. <laughs> Okay, Vichyssoise is a yes. uh, we'll French, explain that one there. French uh, fish soup. A French it's delicious, soup. and it's a pureed terror because we're talking about Gosh. soups and things, and it's all Vichyssoise is not pureed, but it doesn't matter. It's very That's funny, sad. very funny. You'd enjoy the Vichyssoise, delicious. I really the like potato a potato base with the nice uh, seafood. It's delicious. Oh my god, yes. Go ahead. What's the next one? Uh, the it's next from one. from our, our, uh, our favorite uh, DC chef. One of our favorite One of DC our favorite chefs. DC chefs. Yes. DC resident. DC resident. Uh, Jose Spanish Andres. native. Yes. He's, he's from, uh, from España. He said, uh, dear rep uh, MTG, the Gazpacho police was created by me in 1993 to make sure that no one will be able to add Tabasco or jalapeno or strange, thing, strange things to my beloved soup. Please don't blame anyone else but me. Stop by for a glass anytime. Don't forget your mask and vaccination card. Ah! <laughs> Gotta love that. Do you think uh, MTG could get a seat at Haleo? Mm. Yeah, with a mask and a vaccination right. card. Right. No, he would put a table outside for her. Oh, of course he would. Yeah. Because he's, you know, feeding the world. He's got a world kitchen and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Jose Andres, no stranger to feeding disasters. <laughs> Marjorie. Just one. saying. Okay, I'm not proud of that either. Um, <laughs> this is the last one on the list. Again, excellent. With gazpacho police, every crime is a cold case. <laughs> <laughs> That's the list time. Uh, we need a break. Yeah, we do need a break. We're take a break. Good You're good listening that. to Chip Chat on Ripped Radio Network. Swoops.
I want to feed all the fam, I want my man, she eat me I got some niggas that I miss, but we ain't never speak My nigga praying for the uh-huh. world, let my nigga free uh-huh. Let my nigga free If I lost shine, cut it gon' shine, it's mathematical Peace, God, keep your head up on your sabbatical Jet like Brazil, that could finally enter the chat With that skrrr, all over the tracks Big Mac, no facts, sir, the originator was black From Buffalo to Tupelo, we trying to break from the trap You should read the hours, your time as your days blow Rip Radio Network. I am Eros Chip. With me is Tez. Yo, yo, what's popping up? All right, uh, we just finished this time. Yeah. No soup for you. Not at all. Nope. Okay, now no coup for you. <laughs> Special segment uh, rundown. Coup updates. We we seem to have this every week, basically. To one day there will not. They're not. I don't, I don't think know. What, so. No, one day. One day. One day it'll change into such an optimist. I don't. No, 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 no. I know it's going to change to something much worse. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay. Pessimist. Pessimist. Sorry, I misspelled that. So. Here's the thing that people need to know. There's a thing called the RNC. That's the Republican National Committee. Uh, didn't someone? Oh, wasn't it a pipe bomb? Yeah, place that was right placed by there, there. Right there. When was that put there? I think January fifth. I it from was, the, and it was still there on January sixth when all the the political discourse was taking place. Exactly. Pipe bombs, political discourse. I've seen it. I, I, you know what I. As a student of history, they've used pipe bombs before for political discourse. They have. You know, to keep people who look like me from voting. I don't think that it... it there's there's the first word in that phrase, though. There's three words in that phrase. Political discourse are the last two. There was a first word. Legitimate. Oh, God. Yes, you're right. Legitimate. So, no. Sorry. No, no, no. No Sorry. pipe bombs. Not legitimate political discourse. Unless, of course, you're Ronald McDaniel. Uh, I'm sorry, Ronna, Romney McDaniel of the uh, RNC, Mitt Romney's niece, which is tremendous because he hates this. Oh, God, does he? He does. Yeah. Uh, they had a meeting. They had a meeting in Salt Lake City, no less. Of course. Where Mitt lives. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Utah. Of course, that's where all the Romneys are. <laughs> yeah. For, it's a, obviously, it's the yeah. Romney National Committee. Exactly. All right, so they had this meeting, and they decided that they were going to pass a a motion, a statement, right, censuring, basically, I don't know how to put censure into English. Uh, It's a, what what is it? It's the, it's a political, not a political act. Tossing shade at. Yeah, it's basically the... It's supposed to be the highest form of shame that you can place. I like that the idea that the Republicans are placing it, it, shame it, on somebody. I know, but that, I think that is it. Their it's, main superpower being their immunity to shame. shame exactly. But yeah, it's supposed to be like the highest form of shame that you can place. And I guess it go you go on record. To publicly, publicly and on record admonish. Admonish. That is there exactly you it. There you That's go. That's a big word. Woo! Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> they decided they were going to admonish. The two Republicans who are aware that pipe bombs are not legitimate political discourse. And that would be Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. Now, uh, Adam Kinzinger is from Illinois. He is not running again. <laughs> Don't blame you. Because, uh, yeah, he <laughs> obviously knows better. Liz Cheney is from Wyoming. There are only three people in Wyoming, so she <laughs> has to run. Because if she doesn't, then a sheep will become congresswoman and, you know... Her dad will probably shoot it. So they sent this motion for a voice vote. Gunshot. For a voice vote to admonish them for something. Now we have a direct quote here about what they uh, what they were admonished for, essentially, right? It says that they were uh, involved in the January sixth committee that's investigating. Uh, quote, legitimate political discourse. Ordinary citizens engaged in legitimate political discourse. Now, there were like three or four no votes, and they were loud. One of them was Haley Barber's kid, which is <laughs> hilarious. Okay, what's going on? When a barber from Mississippi is calling you crazy, you may have, in fact, jumped several sharks. Yeah, right. <laughs> we are we are at a tipping point. Anyway, they they did this, and uh, 
three or four Republicans were like, yo, mm, maybe not. Including Cocaine Mitch. Yeah, Mitch McConnell was came out strong against Cocaine this. Cocaine Mitch was like, nah, this is insane. Oh, def- Mitch McConnell, hey, right? There you go. Sorry, I didn't was like, space this was definitely a violent uh, insurrection, and a lot of people got hurt, and, you know, five people died, and various other things. On Tuesday, Senate Minority Leader Cocaine Mitch of Kentucky became the highest-ranking Republican elected official to criticize the RNC for the resolution censuring Cheney and Kinzinger for serving on the House panel uh, that's investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. McConnell described the attack as, quote, a violent insurrection for the purpose of trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power after a legitimately certified election from one administration to the next. Holy shit, I agree with Mitch McConnell. Yeah, but, I mean, that's not even that surprising because after it happened, Mitch McConnell, I mean, because also, too, I think there's a sense of He did come out and say that Trump bears responsibility for what happened. after something like that happens to you, and in a sense, you survive it, if we're being completely honest, right? They survive that. There's got to be a sense of anger, and even as politicians, ego to be like, well, no, 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 we're here to do In this. Dignity, too. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is wrong with you? Are? Yeah, I came into that, and he had that with him. His speech. He did. That speech, he did have that with him. Obviously, all that changed when he was like, I would still vote for Trump like five days right, later. Right. But, but I think Susan Collins' quote here is the one that's also yes. kind of crazy to me. Go ahead. Because it's like, Every moment that is spent relitigating a lost election or defending those who have been convicted of criminal behavior moves us further away from the goal of victory this fall. Now that's where she's telling on this. There themselves. we go, right? And now, now ooh, woo! When and Susan Collins is telling the truth, I, I stop the press. <laughs> I've never heard her do that before. So I, she I think said the quiet part out loud. She did a, a little bit, and I don't know. I think the fall. I think with politics at this point, no one knows that fuck is gonna ever happen at nope. this point. And this, this is because I was sure we we're gonna lose. Now, not and also too, I think there's obviously big rulings that'll happen. Come the Supreme Court's gonna do a lot. Come got June, a lot going on. Um, so I, I, this, this, I have a solution to that. Oh God, what's that? You see this? Pops what's in this can the hob slam. Yes, you and I should spend the next couple of months training our livers to take beer can Brett out for oh. like a bender. Ooh. The month before, <laughs> and see if we can put him to the bottom of the tidal basin, figuratively speaking. What is going on? Okay, thank God. <laughs> figuratively speaking, right? You know, maybe we can get the good folks at DC Brow or you know Atlas or somebody booze up Brett to help us out. Yeah, and, okay, and, <laughs> and take Keg Stand Brett to his to his rightful place. If we can put him out with a hangover, he can't he can't vote. Yeah. Not a winning strategy for uh, the Republicans in this case here, uh, or the Trumplicans as I've deemed them. Yeah, I it's mean, just, I don't know. It's it, At this point, when the RNC, because again, we only have two parties in this system. And when, right, the committee of one of the parties decides to call something legitimate political discourse. It's literally a violent insurrection. And then, and then Tucker, who's the real leader of the, the yes, Republicans, right. goes out and tells everybody that it's it's uh, it's heinous and wrong to to call this violent, and and you know I mean the videos are all clear. We've got this guy Ryan Nichols who thinks he's Bob Dolan, calls himself in the third, the person, third person, narrates yeah. as he goes. Ryan Nichols is storming the Capitol. Ryan Nichols is going to drag people through the streets. Like this, these guys were were dangerous. They're violent. They had guns. They had pipe bombs. They they were they were armed. They tried, they tried to blow up your own committee. Yes, they tried to hang. Isn't by it pens. named after Ronald Reagan? Yes, I think the, the, I go by that thing all the time on my bike. I yeah. throw a finger up to it like that lady right. who did it right in Virginia, she, yeah. future congresswoman. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's running. She's, she is That's running. True. Uh, okay, <sighs> it's not legitimate political discourse by any stretch of the imagination. But the story <laughs> here is that various Republicans have broke with Trump on this and, and said, this is a problem. Mike Pence. Yes, that's yeah. Do you, and do you think it's starting to chip away? Because once, well, it, that's the question. That's because, what I came here to ask you. I don't know I, why we have this radio show, but that's the I one know, question right? I, I came to ask you. Do you think, do you, Tez, the moral compass of this show and therefore the rest of the world, yeah, right. think that Mike Pence saying that Donald Trump was wrong, saying specifically that he did not have the authority to overturn the election. And that it was un-American. And that it's un-American to say that one person can do that. Yeah. 
that Mitch McConnell saying that this is wrong, doubling back and saying that this is not the RNC's job to censure or call out individual members. Yeah, raise some goddamn money. That's all you're here for. Do you think... <laughs> That we are starting to see some cracks because it wasn't just them. There were a lot no. of Republicans who who came out and were like, "Whoa, this wasn't legitimate political discord." And and they tried to cover it up by saying that like, "Well, they changed the wording on this at the last minute or yeah, whatever." Come on, bullshit. Right? Y'all heard with y'all ears, right? Yes. I don't don't act like oh well, we didn't get a chance to read it. Y'all motherfuckers don't read anyway, so don't <laughs> don't give me that shit. Y'all heard it and you went, "Hey, yeah, all right." Are we I, seeing cracks? I I think we are seeing cracks. I think it's very specific to right, obviously trying to win, right in the midterms because uh, there, I still believe that there are a decent amount of people in this country that hear that and they're like, even if you if you feel like you're a Republican or you have conservative values, right, and that's the party that you want to put your like, right, you want to put your eggs in that basket, it gets really difficult. When like, what if you really like Liz Cheney? As right. I, like, what if you're a what Republican? If you're really into like, you know, defense spending and low taxes and like low regulation, <laughs> and you're like, man, my only vehicle for this is the Republican Party, and they're involved in a violent insurrection. Ooh, yeah, and might not want to touch that one with a twenty foot pole. Yeah, and it gets to a point where like you kind of don't let them get the twenty foot pole; they'll hit a cop with it. <laughs> they damn if they won't. Yeah, yeah. I just think again, it gets to a point where. You, this has changed. This has changed very rapidly, and they're sinking their teeth in. It, I guess, even by the numbers, the bet they're making is a lot of people are just going to be like, "Hey, like whatever." We think that we want our low, the, the low taxes and all that. That I don't think you're really getting all all these things that you want from them. They don't have a platform. They have no platform. Their platform is that Trump won and everybody else is it's out to get the them. Platform and is, white grievance. Yeah, that, that is their whole platform. There's no platform. They literally did not make a make new a platform. platform. In fact, the, the platform... McConnell's been the, behind that, too. The so platform that's why it's in weird. 2020 included the lines, the current president is bullshit. <laughs> and that was their president. So, like, they, just, they literally voted for the exact same platform with no edits of 2016, which included criti- criticizing the current administration. They, they're not, like, literate people, but... You know, what McConnell is saying isn't really what McConnell is saying. You're right that Collins is saying the the real right. thing. These guys are perfectly comfortable with this kind of violent insurrection, as we're about to talk about yeah. with, with Navarro. They're perfectly comfortable with this outcome. They're just wanting to not talk about it until they get elected. Yeah. And, and they're, they, they, they go, oh, well, it's bad politics. To talk about the insurrection. It's bad politics to talk about political discourse when it's pipe bombs and, and guns. But what they mean to say is, yeah, well, you know, if they had succeeded and made Trump president again, we'd have been fine with it. However, since it didn't, we vote for us in November. That's what they're doing. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's simple as that. And they're surprisingly fine with that level of violence. Yeah, and I I think also too, right? They they are betting on this energizing the base. I don't see how that ba- that base to me doesn't turn into. I mean, I guess you suppress everybody's vote, and they're the only ones to go out and vote. Yeah, it could do that. But even then, right? I, I think just, they're as energized as they get. Yeah, I mean, they've got a thousand volts running through them right now. Yeah, it's it, it, it doesn't make no difference. But I don't know. Again, if you are an, if you're in the middle, right? On this, if you're right, if you're in the middle, and you say you're, you're independent, There's right? There's four people. I know that's what they say. Every you, so, but but again, let's just say you are on on the right. Some of the, if you believe in democracy, you can't believe in this. Right. Some some yeah, but you know we said that in 2016. Yeah, and we said that. But in we gave that person a chance. We gave they they voted that person. That was a legitimate they election. They held their nose and voted. But but the, I I think that I think that all. I don't believe there are such things as independents. I believe those people are Republicans who are ashamed to admit that they're Republicans. Mm. That's what I think. I've always thought that. Mm. I, I mean, because why else? Yeah, you don't want to be called a racist. I mean, but then if you, well, let's say you're an independent who doesn't vote. 
then you're an apathetic idiot. Exactly. Yeah, but I, I wonder if there's – that's when I think – because I think you're you're right to a point there. But I look at it also as there's like the independent voter that's just kind of like – People this who don't vote are confident enough in the system – ultimately writing itself that they it's, don't bother. And it's kind of scary because I'm right. not, yeah, I'm definitely not. I'm not. Yeah, who's that guy? Like, and and based on what's going on, if it took the that amount of participation in 2020, like, it's got to be like that forever. And obviously, the, yes, it has to. Good. And <laughs> I mean, what did we have? 70% <laughs> turnout? It's yeah, still and I was, abysmal. It, it is abysmal, but... <laughs> Gets better. It's, it is better. It's better than the twenty three or whatever that we get in the the off office in Virginia. So I don't. Uh, it is again very scary to me because there are only two parties in the system, uh, and one of them seems to be led by this guy Peter Navarro. Now Peter <laughs> Navarro, it, 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 I want to be clear about this. I share one thing in common with Peter Navarro. I also love to roll up the sleeves on my button down shirts. Okay, they, they don't fit me right. It, it's a thing. So you know, I get that. I, it, it, it gives you a lot of range of motion, you know, and it, it feels better. You don't want them up high on the short sleeves who are looking like those NASA guys that shot people into space in the 60s. And you don't want them down not quite meeting your wrist because you feel a little uncomfortable. Peter Navarro, fashion icon. There he is. Okay. <laughs> um, he also, he was he he keeps going him. on TV. That's the thing I don't understand. He writes books and he goes on TV and he tells everybody that, like, the inside dirt. He was on Ari Shapiro. Or not Ari Shapiro, uh, Ari Melber. What are you doing on on Ari Melber, Peter Navarro? Because he's trying to get his message out. What he's doing is confessing out loud. He told everybody about his plan that he and Bannon cooked up called the Green Bay Sweep, which is hilarious. Oh, wow. Because, you know, Aaron likes to throw. But um, Throw Rogan. (laughs) Yep. So... Anyway, uh, Benny Thompson, who is the chairman of the uh, J6 committee, wants to talk to Navarro, and he wants to talk to him specifically about his role in, like, the very detailed plan to overturn the election. We have this quote here. On Wednesday, uh, Peter Navarro explained that he would not comply with the committee's subpoena Asking him to come and and talk to them. Why? I, I is forcing them. Because because uh, let me guess, executive privilege. Yes, he was citing Trump's executive <laughs> privilege. Quote: It's not it's my privilege to wear not yours. I, this is, it's I'm also sorry. not Trump's, Trump's privilege to wear. Yeah, that's the crazy it's the current part. president's privilege to wear. Christ. He also berated Mr. Pence for failing to oh, go yeah, along with Mr. Trump's demands that he unilaterally throw out electoral votes for Biden. He insulted Mark Short, that's uh, Pence's chief of staff, um, Mr. Pence's former, okay, it, uh, Mark Meadows, that's Trump's chief of staff, and two Republicans on the committee, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. This, this next one is, is savage. Okay, what voice should I use to read this? Mm. You're Australian. Right. Right. Pence betrayed Trump. Mark Short is a coke network dog. Meadows is a fool and a coward. Cheney and Kinzinger are useful idiots for Nancy Pelosi and the woke left. Which is what he wrote in an email to everybody. Because okay. he, he doesn't even just like reply. He goes like reply all. And they go who? And, and he goes Google. Do the thing. You know what a uh, breed a uh, coke network dog is? Oh. Let me guess. Um, I was going to say Springer Spaniel. I was going to say a Libra Terrier. Oh. <laughs> Oak Network being the Libra Terrier. I mean, you know, I, I got to drink Hop Snap every time. That is hilarious. <laughs> That is really, it, really funny. As it ran through my head, I yes. was like, hold on. And I was like, let me see if I can execute it. Yes. Yeah, I'm very proud of myself yes, for that one. You should be. Yes. <laughs> now you're right down or up there with me. <laughs> So bad. All right, the last story we want to tell you about in the rundown comes to us from the great state of Oregon. And I got to say, I have very little positive to say about Oregon, but tonight I have something very positive to say about Oregon. You don't like Oregon? No, I don't. Well, I don't like the Ducks, and I'm I'm mad at Chip Kelly uh, for running up the score against Michigan oh, in the game did. 10 years yeah, ago. He did get I did. Yeah, that was did. a really long time ago. Was, wow, who grudges, man. Fuck that shit. Hey, the wizard's about to blow it again. Hey, no, I'm sorry. If there's anything, uh, 
I have close to religion. It's college football, and uh, and I'm never going to forgive that. It's fine. So, okay. Uh, top candidate for the Republican primary in Oregon uh, for the governorship has admitted that he and his wife had explored a swinging lifestyle before deciding that swapping partners wasn't for them. Now, if you're looking on the video, you can see uh, this guy, Stan Pulliam. He looks like a Republican candidate for them. Uh, yeah. And that's a Mackenzie, his wife, spelled M-A-C-K-E-N-S-Y. That is S-E-Y, sorry. That's, I thought Mackenzie was a pretty white name. I was wrong. That's the whitest way possible to spell Mackenzie. Yeah, because it's got like extra K's in it. Extra yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm talking about the Germanic and Irish uh, language background. What are you laughing about? <laughs> no? Oh, okay. Like Roger Clemens' children. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's hanging strikeouts. Uh, anyway, uh, apparently they were like, you know, kind of into swinging. They they got on a, a Swingers Facebook group called Swinger Facebook Group PDX. I assume that's uh, the Portland area. Is that what the PDX is? Portland is, yeah. Brian's our, our Portland expert. He knows okay. about uh, all things Portland. Uh, they have this, this great post on there. Quote, hi, everybody. Mackenzie and I are excited to be added to your little community. Some that of you sounds kinda have <laughs> already had the pleasure to meet, and we look forward to getting to know the rest of you. They wrote to a group that had, at the time, 536 members. I don't Don't know, is that a lot or a little? I feel like that's, that's, I haven't been on Facebook in 10 years, but I feel like that's small, and you think you're like in a small community. if you're swinging with, you know, 536 other people, you might get bored pretty early. (laughs) You need to find another swingers group to swing with. (laughs) To the thousand member group. Yeah, I mean, come on. (laughs) What are you going to do? After a week or so, you know, I don't know what the rate is. I mean, what's the rate of incidents and swapping and all that, you know, is there math involved in this? I mean, there is some math involved in this. It's about the election result. That's right. <laughs> two by two. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, oh, that's his, why he went on the Facebook group. Right. Apparently, Duh. one of his political opponents found this and uh, and started running these ads that said, "quote If you want an actual conservative as your next governor, then we need your help." Took it. <laughs> said, said the other uh, candidate that was running against him. Oh, no, wait, that was him. He said, I'm the only candidate who has courage to say what needs to be said about the integrity of our elections. Oh, good. So he thinks that there's election fraud and he's a, you know, ho. (laughs) I mean, is that the proper word? I don't know what the... I don't know. I don't know. We're not being... I think we're not being respectful of uh, folks different... uh, uh, Let's let Brian... Brian Brian, Brian is a bit of an expert on on the Portland uh, lifestyle. (laughs) So, Brian, tell us about what you know about this. Okay, honestly, I feel like, you know, uh, Pulliam is... You know, he should just own, own up to it. I mean, it's like he tried. It didn't work for him and his wife. Mind you, I think the wife will probably want to extend that. She was probably doing fine. Yeah. So, um... She's like a real world, like six or seven. Yeah, I she's mean, like a swinging ten. I yeah, guess. yeah. I so know. the way I see it is, is I think in this day and age, I really think politicians should try to properly embrace this community. Um, and I'm gonna, a lot of votes there. Yeah, a lot of votes. I mean, sure. these people vote. Five hundred thirty-six I mean, votes, right? Yeah, there. right. So See, that turned that isn't that what turned uh, the That's Gore? Wisconsin, right there. I didn't that turn Gore? That's right. <laughs> that turned Gore in uh, two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, there, there's. I, I, you, it's funny. It's like uh, you know, we, we just had the uh, adult entertainment industry here a couple months ago, Exotica, and we've asked that question to some of the adult entertainers. Is ask them, you know, if the, if you were able to change the law, what would you do? And and one of them uh, by the name of September Rain said, pretty much make sex work properly legal. Sure. And 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 honestly, it's like one just. I would add on to the fact of just get rid of this negative tone and of dealing with people in the sex industry as you know. Oh, wait, can we tax the it? Same as, yo, can we tax can. it? Holland that, is doing it. Okay, let's yeah. <laughs> go. The Dutch, <laughs> the Dutch have flowers and sex. Yes, they're winning. 
Uh, what are we? No, we're not talking Dying about sex work exactly. We're talking mm-hmm. about like consensual adults sharing. Yes, partners, that's right? what the pretty much this is. I who, mean, who cares? What yeah, who doing? cares what you do? Yeah, I, I, I care mean, this guy wants to overturn the election. Yeah, that's more important. That's yeah, yeah that's more important. Exactly, yeah, right? but not that the, not governor, that he's the governor's the governor's mansion is going to be a revolving right. door. That's okay. Who cares? Right. Right. But as, as as always, when when you add when you have politics politics and sex. Everyone focused on the sex part, but really it's like, who cares what these people do in the bedroom? It's more important to know what these people do in those offices Remember and changing your laws. Jackson, like, uh, bribe people with whiskey to vote for? I mean, like, yeah. God willing, we'll be, you know, governors of some state at some point, one or the other. You can be governor of the new state of New Columbia or whatever we're going to call it. Yeah, no, right? yeah, we're not it's supposed to be it Washington, Washington, Douglas Commonwealth. Sure. Whatever. I just want the, whoever the governor is to appoint me to the Senate. That's all I'm asking. I will be, I will <laughs> one day be governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, one one could hope. And at that point, like, you know, my various vices be damned. Like, that's totally irrelevant. Yeah, I'm going to be, first of all, if I'm, I'm going to be the politician who just shows up at the local bar and I'm here helping, my, helping the local economy. You mean out. John Boehner? Because I met him in the local bar. <laughs> I, look, I didn't punch him, I was nice to him. Good job. <laughs> Good job. And he is traffic cone orange. That's true. <laughs> I can. I, I after how many? Up. It was dark many. in there, and he was glowing. Yeah, <laughs> he's that much. How many wine? How many glasses yeah. of wine? All the cigarettes too. Oh, no, true. but I mean, like you know, who is it? A big deal? Yeah, uh, not not if to me. If he was a Democrat and running, this might might have improved his numbers. Yeah, he's sex positive. The Again, fr- friend of the the community. This this is just a repressed nation. It is. So it is. And and also too, isn't the problem with I heard the problem with this nation is no one's having sex. Uh well, no, we have a low fertility rate. Well, yes. it's sort of similar <laughs> idea. Uh, well, yeah, we low fertility, but I more people die than were born this year for the first time like ever, and because we don't have any immigration, we're going to run out of people soon. Yeah, but so even, please come visit. We said this on the hangout. Yes, we did. Yeah, I did we want to like we wanna, reiterate we promote this. In- if you are from another country and have some marketable skill or not, not really, yeah, if just you come just over. Do anything? We'll just assign you a job. We don't care. Come here. Yeah, because we do. need to replace all of those people that Ron DeSantis killed in Florida. Yeah, so, you know, it's a good point. Welcome. Tez will marry you. <laughs> Get you a green card. Eh? <laughs> Citizen, now he can do it. All right, uh, no, go I ahead. Um, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> We're ashamed of ourselves. I know. I have shame. Um, yeah, I don't. Again, for me, I feel like this is a, a the bigger issue here is he believes he wants to overturn the election. He wants to overturn the elections. Yeah. So what if he issue. loses the primary? Is he going to say it's it's fixed because he was a swinger? No, I mean he's going to demand the cyber ninjas audit his wife's uh, pants. I mean, the voters, the voters will. It swings sometimes. Can we get a, a Pornhub channel on that? Brian, get on that. <laughs> Audit the governor's pants. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hashtag. Oh, God. <laughs> Glenn Youngkin, you better watch out. Uh-oh. Yeah, we'll get to you. Okay, you want to take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Chip Chat on <laughs> Ripped Radio Network. <laughs>
Welcome back to Chip Chat here on Rip Radio Network. I'm your host, Chip. With me is Tez. Sweeps. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about uh, VR stuff in the break. In the meta. We're not into it. I I find... <laughs> I find it. This is what I it's think disorienting. Is a little currently. bit because I, I it frightens me. Um, Oregon governors into yes, the polygon the, uh, swinging. There's going to be a point where everyone is inside on their headsets, and like a select few are outside controlling everything or taking all their shit. <laughs> or, yeah, but, right, but that's controlling. Everything. Like that's the thing that I I always wondered about the Matrix. Like why nobody was just robbing everybody. <laughs> Like, they're all strapped into their chairs. Like, just take their stuff. Yeah, take the stuff. And it's free. The machines will just put new stuff. It's frightening. Nobody's going to care. Okay, now we've come to a new segment of the show, uh, which is called Governor or Not. Nah. Florida or Not. It's just like that, Dead. but it features <laughs> governors. Uh, in this case, it which features <laughs> Florida's governor, <laughs> Rodney Santos. Santos. What governor will we start with, Jim? Uh, Ryan DeSantis uh, voiced his support for a bill that would prohibit the discussion of anything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sexual orientation and gender identity in the state's primary schools. Asked by a reporter at a Miami event on Monday, he said it was, quote, entirely inappropriate for teachers to be having conversations with students about gender identity, citing instances of them telling children, don't worry, don't pick your gender yet, and also, quote, hiding classroom lessons from parents. That's not happening. Right. That's, of course <laughs> it's, it's not, not happening. happening. Quote, schools need to be teaching kids to read, to write. Ron DeSantis said. <laughs> and arithmetic. <laughs> yes, and arithmetic. <laughs> but not to read those books by Toni Morrison. God damn it. Uh, we need to teach them science. Not that science. Not that science. History. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I'm going to keep this quote. That's why I put it in there. Science. Not that science. History. Not that history. We need more <laughs> civics, but not how elections work. And understanding of the U.S. Constitution. Also not the parts of the Constitution. And what makes our country unique? All those basic stuff, which is not a complete sentence, <laughs> is the children learning. <laughs> Them is, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I? Can I, yes. I need. I need. Brian's, Brian's going to join it now. I want to. I want to point out that a lot of people are calling this the "Don't Say Gay" bill because it is framed as if. The, this prohibits the discussion of homosexuality, gender fluidity, and all of this stuff. But actually, the way this is written, because of course they couldn't write a bill that says we ban the discussion of homosexuality because it would violate the Constitution very clearly. They just say we ban the discussion of things that make people uncomfortable about gender identity or sexual orientation, which is good. And I support this bill. <laughs> because I think it is very uncomfortable to be taught about heteronormativity. <laughs> right. And all of this stuff about yeah. male, female, marriage, nuclear family bullshit, which is very offensive and harmful to all of the people who aren't that. Yeah, it is, to be and honest. I, I am shocked that You're the inundated man with this who every wants day. people to learn to uh, read and write <laughs> didn't bother to read and write how that might What's the word? Backfire on him. Vote for this bill and sue your school for teaching heteronormativity. Do we got an email this week? No. Yeah. Not, go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, I, right. <laughs> I, I, I am so surprised that this governor doesn't realize. You're not. I'm not, but... Um, is governing this state that majority, if you think about it, has... It has Key West in it. it. Yes. A very high... And Orlando. High volume of and LGBT city. community people the there. The home of Uncle on Niece Vincent. Come in here. <laughs> it is bad. Heteronormativity is dangerous yeah. and it must be stopped. And I applaud Ron DeSantis for taking a valiant stand against it. This man is an idiot. He, I, I, I is, is, when is the, when is the next election for Florida? When? <laughs> so, just, just, just when? Give him shit ahead. Do you really? I, I get that folks, I mean, all the math and look, 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 I look, 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 look
Joe Biden's going to give him a free crack pipe. It'll we'll get fine. to that. We're gonna we'll get to that. I am so I'm I'm boy. Boy. Well, I'm actually, boy. Well, actually, actually, I think he already I'm did, but it expired. So, <laughs> but Gillum, right? First of all, this, if Gillum was in there, more folks would feel comfortable. That's true. It's insane, but that's bad because <laughs> certain folks would feel uncomfortable. Oh yeah. What do you mean? There's one of them in in the in the governor's mansion. A black person. Yeah, that's what they meant. <laughs> that's what they meant. <laughs> like, we 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 got Jameis off. All right, he won us the championship. Can you just cool it a while? Like that's what they're saying, <laughs> right? Exactly. That's what they mean. That's true. Oh my. Uh, the the <sighs> measures opponents contend that the bill would be detrimental to the mental health of the state's LGBTQ children, teachers, and very basically everybody else, preventing them from openly talking about themselves and family. I I agree. But I think it, it is also bad for all of the rest of us because you and I, we're, we're heteronormative, yeah. right? You know, we're cisgendered, yeah. hetero, wise and whatever. Yeah. The, we are by, by Republican definitions, quote unquote, normal. Well, except for, well, okay. yeah, the okay. obvious Sorry. things about us. But yeah. <laughs> I was, I was like, you are, are one here. They're not. You're not. Yeah, they, yeah. they let you know that a lot. Every day yeah. else. No. <laughs> You with the thing, yeah. three fifths of the time. But Look anyway, they think I'm this color. That's the, it's the red shirt. <laughs> Tiger Woods has a red shirt. That's how you can tell it's him. Uh, it's communism, right? So, <laughs> but we have been injured by the the patriarchy and the heteronormativity and this sort of like I was yeah. telling somebody today about my my grandmother. I'm conditioned. Who is a PhD astrophysicist. She got a PhD from Harvard in astrophysics in 1940. You want to know what it's like to be a woman That's with insane. a PhD in astrophysics in 1940? Yeah. Nobody knows what astrophysics is in 1940, but like, let alone what a woman is. And then still somehow with this kind of credentials and a full-time job, she had to be home to have lunch ready for my mother and, and her brother to come home from school and eat lunch in the middle of the day because that's how things used to work in the 50s. And that was totally fine. We all have been injured by the yes, patriarchy yes. and the heteronormativity yeah. that we've been inflicting on our children. And I am proud of Ron DeSantis and the conservative Republicans for finally taking a stand against teaching <laughs> these kind of things that make people like me feel uncomfortable. I vote for this bill. <laughs> Speaking of governor or not, back to Florida and Miami. The school system in Florida is the most populous County includes students whose families moved here from 160 countries. So it's just a it's a Benetton ad. I want it, just, I wanted to, that's just like the preface to this. Yes. Its expansive cultural mix is represented in the district's curriculum, which includes not only American history, but also the stories of violent government of upheavals, such as the revolution of enslaved people who founded I'm sorry, Haiti. Mm. 90 mile it's more Manuela. than that yeah off the coast <laughs> and more recently political trauma of protesters who fled or perished in Castro's Cuba okay I mean it makes sense if you're in Florida seems I like, like a reason we all are it's, it's relevant hey, right. and I feel like oh I come to school I can learn about what happened with my yeah, people yeah 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 don't worry though Florida lawmakers <laughs> are considering legislation to police what students are taught Miami Beach senior high school teacher Russell Rael, Rywell, I don't know, Whatever. wonders if he will still be able to discuss how some of his students' ancestors even arrived in the United States. How do you teach slavery, the slave trade, the Holocaust? He asked in a speech uh, that he gave to other teachers, how do you teach these issues without talking about the participants and the roles they played? As a part of the Stop Woke Agenda, Governor Ron DeSantis, where have I heard that name? Hmm. That guy from the last story that loves the patriarchy. <laughs> Ron DeSantis and lawmakers are now considering a bill that would allow almost anyone to object to any instruction in public school classrooms. They're trying. All right. So I are, now I see what's happening. I am in on this. I see what's happening. They're trying to destroy the public school system. Well, uh, well hold on. <laughs> Rewind this. After Brown v. Board, exactly how many public schools were built in uh, in in New Orleans? None, zero. <laughs> well, hold on, wait a minute. You mean the public schools is for? Wait, didn't was, didn't Virginia goes, didn't Virginia at one point say, uh, "Yo, forget school." Like this is a, a a town in Virginia or a county in Virginia that was like, "Nah, we're done with public we have schools. No schools, we're no public schools." schools. That's right. That's, so we have a couple of those counties. 
Yeah. Public schools are... Wait, who... Brian? Reconstruction was we have, bad. It was. <laughs> These damn public schools. They stole our peanut butter pie. <laughs> That's what the war was about. Brian is our is our <laughs> Wait, esteemed no, producer. Man, no. Brian, our esteemed producer, can you please uh, research exactly how many... Uh, who's allowed to go to public schools? Anybody? Fuck. Damn it. Yeah. Um, we don't want to know that because uh, we don't want... Let me check. check they still use it as a form of cultural Marxism. Like, we just throw that <laughs> shit on that, yeah. okay. We throw that shit on everything. That shit is like hot sauce. First of all, y'all like, don't even know what Marxism exactly. is. Exactly. Like... How what can what what is cultural Marxism? Every culture is equally represented. What, yeah, is that what, what that, that means? means? Because if that's the case, there should be a lot more square dancing on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, this country do not existed. The whole world has very clearly decided that hip hop is the dominant culture in music, right? The whole world, but culture, yet yeah, the whole world. <laughs> BTS is writing hip hop records. Yeah, in Korea. Hip hop is a dictatorship at this point, it and it is. controls everything, okay? But thanks to cultural Marxism. Yeah, right. Opera is making a comeback. <laughs> I waited until he took a drink. Yeah, that's, that's just. I'm sorry. Dad, yeah, you're wrong for that one. Okay, so what are we doing about this? Uh, we don't want to teach history that makes people uncomfortable. I, I agree. We also, not just history, it could be any subject, apparently. Hey, yeah, right? Like, where does so this in ninth stop? grade. I was in Can you talk about the Native Americans at all? And like, no. We, <laughs> sorry. Just to the Washington football team, of course. Yes. It's the proper term for the Native Americans. <laughs> oh, you're a member of the Navajo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Ah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. I'm also a fan of the, the, the commanders. <laughs> it's the same, 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 I was same right? We're same, I, I, was same. Telling, I was telling Brian it's earlier, same, same. I, I was listening on Monday. Just I, I caught up because I was going into work, and I, I was listening to Tony Kiki, and Kiki had the funniest oh. the funniest response. Okay, something. wait a minute. We got to pause this by saying she is a Cowboys fan, and we hate yes, that. Yes, but no, but she said. But, she's but it was awesome around right. this. It was around this. She she's said, right. They were talking about I like, heard the beef. It too. Is the beef over? And they just, <laughs> she was like, like what I look like beefing with a commander? Right. <laughs> and I was like, fair. No. It's fair. Well, I'll still fight her, though. Cowboys and commanders. They're yeah. the same. I mean, in a different time. It's not about <laughs> that. It's, now it's just about, like, the colors. We're To quote Jerry Seinfeld, we're rooting for laundry. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, what we're doing. No, that's completely But it. we're not getting into that. Okay. The, 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 the point here is, uh, I, in ninth grade, I had algebra. Mm-hmm. No, eighth grade. Eighth, eighth, eighth grade, grade, I had algebra. It was hard. Struggled with it. Jeez, you, I barely got out of algebra. Struggled with it. Christ. In ninth grade, I got to geometry. Ace. Ace that. That's easy. That, ace ace that one, right? In tenth grade, algebra two. Ace that. Turns out geometry unlocks algebra. That's a thing. It didn't make a connection with me. Okay. Well, the only time I had to have to do summer school my whole life. You should sue somebody over that because that algebra made you uncomfortable. It did. And algebra is Arab, so oh, it's a true. double. Ho ho. You know but what else is there? Make me uncomfortable. Algorithm. Oh. It's deep state, eh? <laughs> They're all in on it. <laughs> That's Ron DeSantis is batting above his weight. I mean, this guy is amazing. Again, he's going to secretly unlock the court system for basically us. Maybe. Which is dangerous. If We're, you're a lawyer and you listen to this show... And you want to do some some pro bono work because we have no money. None. Would you like to help us file ridiculous lawsuits in various places to cause various harm to various people? <laughs> Call the show. What's our What's our Twitter? Uh, uh, At Chip Chat RR. Yep. And if call the show is three zero one two three two fifty seven hundred. All right, Brian. If the phones light up, just hang up. We're not talking to them. Don't okay. talk to lawyers. <laughs> I, well, leave them on hold. I'll talk to them on the break. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> screen the calls. Yes, please. Brian screens all. Our I don't want to miss anything. Right. <laughs> Dave Chappelle might be calling. Okay, he might have. Yeah, I'm telling you. Do you this thought I like poor people? I'm telling you, that's how it starts off. I'm right. Telling, that you know me. <laughs> it's just the remix edition on poor people. I am pissing <laughs> off. <laughs> I don't write the shit. Call Aaron Magruder. Three hundred thousand or more, I think, is what the in in they wanted. That was to have. what it was. 
broken. Those were broke for the other Ohio. ones. Those are the, the other. Ones. Those are the, the. Those are the. the That's the, the high. The non affordable house. That's the non affordable. What the hell's going on in Ohio? I'm gonna. Come we don't move know. In. I ain't gonna move. Three hundred thousand sounds affordable. For me, yeah, exactly. I'm sitting there like, oh yeah, yeah. I could buy three of them. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot, but yes, exactly. The Washington. The wages, Washington. Yes, yeah, the Washington DC wages, wages. Yeah. The hell, Dave Chappelle, come on our show and fight us. <laughs> Hundred percent gonna happen. Mm, the problem is he's gonna be too charming and we'll be laughing. Of course be, we will. Exactly. And at the end, and, and, and at, and the end end, at the end of me, I'm gonna be like, "Well, you know the affordable." <laughs> That's right. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. We are homers, so we're we're probably gonna be like, yeah. "Okay, he's gonna come in wearing like." I'm a homer. I want more people to have homes. Yes. <laughs> he's gonna Shit. come in wearing wearing a, a Ernest Biner jersey. Oh God. And and I'm just gonna it's leave. over for it's you. Over. Yeah, it's over. Done. Okay, you want to take a break? I think it's needed. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, more terrible shit is about to happen in Virginia. Oh, gubness. Oof. <laughs> you never know what's about to happen on Chip Chat. You're listening to Chip Chat on Rip Radio Network. Swift. loud sorry I'm <laughs> Chip. with me is tess uh Oops. all right so we were just talking about the governor of the great state of florida mm-hmm. uh now i come from a, a state lucky you. well i should say lucky you. i wasn't born in a state yeah but i currently reside in a state you don't. Must be, must be nice. No, must I be nice. Yeah. yeah. You know that thing where you got to be like uh, born in the United States to be president? I wasn't. 
Neither were you. I would. Hey, so we can't. Oh, wow, be, that's an interesting. Yeah, neither, yeah, that would the same at that point. I threatened this a number of times to run, uh, just to see what would happen. I mean, one, <laughs> one during the birtherism thing, I was really into this, right? Because remember that McCain yeah. was born in the canal zone, and therefore that was legitimate. But Obama was born in a state called Hawaii, and that was not. And I was ready to be like, well, I was born in the District of Columbia. Can I run for president? One day when I assume my uh, Senate leadership, I will push through the bill. When when you're yeah. Senate Majority Leader. Yeah, exactly. I'm from the great state leader. of New Columbia. Of New Columbia. I will push through the bill to end this foolishness. How does a land of... You know we, what? We, I'll, you know we what? need Here's an a, amendment is what we'll we need. We need an though. amendment. And this is what I'll say as well, too. I'll say this. We can go one of two ways with this. Either you can make the amendment or only Native Americans can be president. Pick mm. one. Pick one. Pima president. I like that. Hey, I, pick one. Because this whole this whole thing about, like, and I think there might the be a Piscataway presidency. The whole thing about being born in the United I, I, I get why. What even are the United States? What is the fuck How united are these states? Yeah, like, no worries. If Alabama secedes again, can nobody from there run? Alabama, you can leave. We're good with that. Take off, eh? Nah, Nick Saban wants his. The, he needs the, the the national media. He needs the Tuscaloosa contract. Tuscaloosa is definitely going to want to stay in the United States. Yes, <laughs> what well, I was going to say. Hold on, what? But, <laughs> but they the might rest, car that might be a federal, yeah, it's a little federal zone. Gerrymandering. Yeah, just get that in. It'll be fine. All right. Speaking <laughs> of states, the great Commonwealth of Virginia, my home state. Talk to us about it. Yeah. The home state of uh, Bobby Lee and uh, TJ and uh, Woodrow Wilson. Oh, that is a good. Yeah, Woodrow Wilson was that. born in, in Virginia. That's true. He's our sixth. There are six presidents from, from Virginia. We had a lot of the first ones. Yeah, yeah, I did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, we get why. Because Washington. The, whole, the only way you could even get this shit to even work was like, hey, Jefferson is like, yo, we got Madison, you. Yeah. Monroe. You know, we were doing all right for a little while, and we had to wait a little while, and then we just got Wilson. But that everybody thinks of him as New Jersey. That is a good point. A lot of people think of him in New Jersey. And but he was I, born in, in Virginia. I think of him as the person who uh, debuted the white supremacist. The, well, the first, the, that major film. He, he, he true. debuted a film inside the White House. What, what was it? Something about a nation. Birth of a nation. <gasps> yeah, that was the one. Yeah. It's yeah. right up there with Reefer Madness. <laughs> it is up there with that. Telling the real story of what happened after the Civil War. Ron DeSantis would be real into that one. <laughs> All right. So anyway, the great Commonwealth, uh, Florida is is leading the charge of, of of fuck all, but we will not be left behind. We've got a governor. Democrats know how to lose a fucking election because this is in fucking insane that young kid is. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, yo, this is insane that he is the governor. We ran because, T-Mac. That's be, be, because these motherfuckers couldn't run a decent ass. You, you couldn't. All yo, we had to do is run a campaign of remember what it was like four years ago. <laughs> hey, you could have again. You can trick folks, right? Everybody's into tricking folks. You could have just said a little less. Terry McAuliffe Terry was McCall- not willing to lie to white moms as freely as Glenn Youngkin was willing to lie to white moms. That's true. It's simple as that. Okay, so Glenn Anyways, Youngkin won. My he is. He is the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, my my home state. I miss the blackface governor. Yeah, right. <laughs> Remember when we had a governor who did blackface, but because he was he did so blackface much blackface, and he was like, "Shit, you know what? Let me just go full on." Yo, he was like, "All right, like, you want to see y'all. me moonwalk?" I got you. <laughs> he I got offered y'all. a moonwalk <laughs> at his said, apology press conference. He said, "I got y'all." After this, like. But remember when that guy, who was a doctor, by the way, he's a she, doctor. She he is doc- a doctor. He is a doctor. A pediatric neurosurgeon, no less, was 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 like great. Remember when that guy with the black face was great? I was I was telling folks they'd be like, well, you know, Virginia. I was like, well, you know, Virginia's changing. Well, Glenn Youngkin remembered about that black face because here's what happened: a 17 year old <laughs> activist started tweeting some things about how Glenn Youngkin is a bad governor for a variety of reasons, all of which are objectively true. Glenn Youngkin didn't like that. 
And so he sent his campaign Twitter account after a 17-year-old kid. I want to be clear about that this kid is a minor. That's sick, man. Yeah. That's no sick, shit, man. So he sent, he sent his Twitter after this kid, and they basically attacked him relentlessly. And here's this quote. Um... Oh, I don't know. Here's a picture of Ethan, that's the, the kid from the Twitter, with a man <laughs> who had a blackface slash KKK photo in his yearbook. That would be uh, Governor Dr. Ralph Northam, who did, in fact, do the blackface and had a KKK photo in his yearbook. This is true. And then went uh, on a tour of all the black churches in Virginia and was basically forgiven. And, I, I feel and, like. and from what I know of Virginia politics, black folks was like, yeah, that shit is crazy, but if he's going to keep pushing through these things, that help it's us. It's like fighting me. Joe Morrissey. Fighting Joe Morrissey, yeah. uh, you know, well, whole other story. Go so back and listen to previous episodes, yeah. fighting Joe Morrissey. But like, uh, yo, Glenn Youngkin attacked a 17-year-old kid. Online bullying. Yeah. Big Christy T. Melania. Where, where Melania? Oh, that's her. Yo, that can is her. you be best, please? We need help. The Commonwealth is reaching out to Mar a Lago. I'm sure she's not there. Sorry, the Commonwealth is reaching she's out to York. Manhattan. Yeah, uh, there you go, thank, yeah. You, thank you, Melania. <laughs> Mar a Lago. She hasn't been next to Trump since. What do I care? Well, what's her separate, jacket they took say? Separate planes at they the did. end of that shit. Obviously, she took Air Force Seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Okay, but not to be outdone, the Virginia Senate voted Wednesday to make masks optional in the the schools. <laughs> now, listen, uh, this yeah. was a, this is a bipartisan yeah I, deal because I think we need to have a whole show on like neck maybe and not I don't know what it is, but we need to talk about. We have essentially reached the the fuckum point. It's there, right? I, we're I, there. I see this in my house a lot, and I, we're there. We're there, right? I we're glad there. Did the okay? Lena Wen said we're there. We're there, it, it, but people, but. And I, I like Lena Wynn. If Personally, you're scared, I, wear your mask. Yo, and a good mask. A good mask, yeah. Everybody else, do what you want. All these anti-vax idiots, y'all taking all chances. I think the only mandate at this point should be the vaccine. A, yeah. at, a cer- at a certain point, because, to, again, I feel like folks are... And again, if you, you want to wear your mask, wear your mask. The second that we're really clear with, like, the, the kids under five... Yes. We're in... We're in it's, Huge fucking territory. It's gonna get to that point, right? And I, I'm trying to prep my household for like, hey, look. And I've already seen like some of the changes. Like, there's a little change in pre. My daughter testing. asked me this today. She's like, I'm, I'm, I got both of my shots. I go, I go, yeah. She goes, you have all your shots. I said, yeah. She said, can we not wear our mask in the grocery store? I was like, yeah. yeah. I and the thing is, I might continue to wear my mask in the grocery because I just don't want to get sick. That's fair. It's fair. It's fair. But also, like. I, also, it gives me another thing to like plaster various sports teams on. I also say and I've Michigan been, stuff on I've my been face. Walking. I got capital stuff on my face. I know a decent amount of people, and I've been moving. And sadly, the- Orioles stuff on my oh, face. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Really bad. It's a loser one there. Yeah, uh, but like I've been moving through the streets, and some folks just don't know who I am anymore, mm-hmm. I, and they, I enjoy that. I had a meeting enjoy- today with a guy I've known for a decade, and he didn't recognize me, and I went whoop. I pulled down my mask and he goes, "Oh, I went to a bar uh, a week and a half ago." Shock, good, it, we're good. He was like, "He's like, he's like, can I help you?" I was like, did they "John, have, damn it, did they have hop slam." They didn't have hop slam, but they, they had they had Miller High Life. Oh, it's see, the you, pug. Think, don't, don't say, you went to the I, pug, didn't yeah, you? No, 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 no. My boy, my boy, uh, Solly's on U Street. This, okay, this, yeah, this, uh, the pug. We, we get the High Life in a in a shot, right? In a shot for yeah. three dollars. To look, I, again, I like hop slams and all this expensive type shit and that, but like I'm like we'll drink low shit brow, beer. like yeah, 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 don't give me, but yeah, I don't know, yeah. When so, we get Roger here for the tour, yeah, gonna it's f- gonna be it's gonna be Bo and, and, and shit like that. Yeah, oh yeah, we're going to stand. Well, they don't have beer at stands. No, they got they, they got a draft at, 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 at stands. Yeah, that's new though. That's not yeah. That's the last that's like five or six years. years. That's kind of new thing. Hasn't been there. Yeah, I don't know. I I think around this whole thing, right? It was bipartisan. Um, I think for the schools, Massachusetts is moving this New way. York. I mean, New York, Illinois, like, I mean, the blue states are basically, and I, I want to be clear, like yes, people are saying like, okay, clear. there's a difference here. The red states have been on, on optional masks for a while. They have high incidence of COVID and a lot of people dead. And the blue states are now moving to it because they've seen the incidence of COVID 
going down. And I got an email today from my county that said, when we get to this many days in a row, below this threshold, we will take the masks off the kids. And, I, and, and that's all I think on both camps, the extremes are insane at this point. Well, because it almost, and, and you know, uh, what really, I guess, frustrates me around the mask. There are no Democrats who want to keep masks on indefinitely. There are Republicans who think Democrats want to keep masks on indefinitely. Yeah, but I've seen a couple of like, I, it almost feels like, I don't know. It's like I, a security blanket. Yeah, like a security blanket. And yeah. like I, I was walking by someone today and like, I, or it was two days ago. And like they pulled the mat and like we're outside and like the, the shit doesn't We're out of doors, man. The shit, the shit doesn't jump off of folks no. that way. Like. I, and again, if we're going to follow the science, I understand why the White House hasn't made a move yet, because in the country, there's a lot of folks who are dying. So the hospital, right, as a country, but in certain areas, in I, states, counties, whatever. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I, again, I think we should be really cautious. And if there's another variant, there should be. We should testing. be ready to snap it back into we're place. Gonna, but like testing and things of that nature, we should be sending tests like everybody should have. 40 tests in a house already yes, like it yes, should be sitting yes. there there's there's things we should do but we're moving it's almost like folks want to move like it's it's either march all or nothing. 2020 yeah, yeah. when it's not it's march it's going into march 2022 and again i understand if you want to feel more safe if you feel like you still want to do those those measures don't stop them i do think yo get vaccinated right start there for get a fuck boost say, get for, vaccinated. just start there People all might, three shots. It's, it's all not three. this like two. Yeah. All three. Um, They're the Trump vaccine. Get the Trump vaccine. Get the Trump one. Yeah. I got a Trump one. I got the Trump one. I got, I got two early. Trump ones. I got that shit early. Yo. I got a Johnson Trump one and I got a Pfizer Trump one. <laughs> I was looking at my thing because I've been presenting the vaccine thing. I was like, yeah, yeah I got my vaccine like the end of March. Yeah. Like in 2021. Like, yo, I was here to just to test the shit out for y'all. It's okay. I'm still I here. was so involved in administering the vaccine because we hosted a bunch of these at where I work that when I went to go get my booster, the guy who was running it saw me, recognized me from the nose up. Oh, God. So he knew you. And he mask. goes and, I, and he points at me and I go, hey, yeah, but I'm on the other end of this this time. And I was like, thanks for sliding me. And I had to wait like a whole week. I was like, yo, you could have bumped me to the top of the list. And he's like, yeah, sorry about that. But I've seen folks, folks have been tacking Lena Wen on it, like, uh, like, because again, no one wants to have a nuanced discussion about, about this she at all. She has a nuanced discussion, but the problem is it became politicized. Yeah. And so it became, it's either you're vaxxed and masked or you're not. And it's like, well, no, there's, some there's obviously. On the left, some of my friends on the left, I saw like, they were like going in on her a little bit. I'm not going to call no one out, but I was just looking at this and I was like. She's wait. not wrong that there's harm being done from kids being masked in schools. There is. Yeah. But there is a more acute and more formidable harm being done from kids not being masked in the height of a goddamn pandemic. So we take that risk, we take that hit, and we can probably recover from that later so long as the kids don't die. Let's right. get through the part where the kids don't die, and then we can work on the rest later. We're now almost at later. But it's predicated on people don't fuck this up. And yeah. go out there being, you know, unvaxxed, uncared for, spreading this shit all around. Yeah, I think I got I got an email like for our we've been doing uh, testing in pre-K and it's been weekly. And they've got to the point where they're like, you know, we based on our numbers and the numbers are super low. Like I'm talking right. about one person is testing it. And right. Like, and I'm like, all right, based on our testing, we're going to give all at we're gonna, tomorrow. We'll get at home tests. And we're not going to test because we're not testing the pre-K at this point. They're isolated from the other students. Right. Like, they're separated. They don't it come all in contact. Seems reason there there like, are, like, reasonable measures. Reasonable, we can, because, we, again, eventually we're going to have to move out of it. Yes. It, it's not going to be one way forever. Right. And <sighs> and But it just requires that people are willing to sort of manage this in, in a non-political sense. Your identity isn't tied to whether you, you do or do not wear a mask. It's your not. identity is tied to various other things like your sports teams or your music tastes <laughs> or whether or not you think that it's okay for white people to skate to Nina Simone. Those are all important things that people have to understand. But we don't need to be tied up in this. This is a, a mathematical question. Yeah, and it's going to, I mean, it, regardless, it's going to play into politics because at a certain point, and also if you get this right and you time it right, 
You, you're a goddamn you're hero. God, yo, if you time like Trump even would be this, reelected right now. Yo, he was. That was the most crazy. I've never if watched. If he'd some, only just fucking left it alone and let the scientists tell said? everybody if he what didn't to do. That shit out. What would you have said? I'd have been like, well, you know what? I'd have been like, look, this guy is bad for the Republican, all this kind of shit. But when push came to shove, he, he didn't get it wrong. People. He didn't get it wrong, and I would, I would, I would. Ran with that, and I would have told everybody about it. I was it. ready to invade Iraq. I got it. I understand. <laughs> Yo, I get it. Well, Colin Powell helped you with that one. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and all of his credibility that George Bush stole. RP. Not George Bush. No. Just no. Colin Powell. Yeah. W, I don't know. W. Michelle will throw candy on his grave. It would be fine. <laughs> all right, you want to you wanna do some uh, This Ain't Happening? This ain't happening. Yeah, it's the next segment. This, or no, we want to do test talk. This test talk. I was like, oh, oh yeah. no, we got to do. I'm sorry, I skipped. Yeah, you skipped it exactly. It's well, I didn't print that part out. I know, and, and I just and have the link, so I can't read that. Exactly, I've added into my. Okay, test let's talk. do some test talk. All right, okay, test talk time. I'm ready. So, a handful of prominent male economists, uh, including uh, the former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers, oh yeah, they're freaking out on Twitter, which isn't really always the biggest because. It's a small population, but they're freaking on Twitter because uh, the New York Times did an awesome profile on someone who I really enjoy, Stephanie Kelton. I don't want to get too deep into this, but Stephanie Wait, Kelton is sounds a, like a lady. She is a lady. Is lady, a lady economist? A lady economist. They let them do that now. They let them do that now. <laughs> um, and, and Joe Biden ruined everything. <laughs> he ruined everything. And uh, Ms. Kelton is known for uh, MMT, which is a modern monetary theory. That's right? the place where the Ravens play. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> oh my god, that's Sorry. really that's really good. Actually, that's it. it is. MM, MMT. Yo, when it shit starts going through, it's gonna be MMT stated. That's so good. I am sorry All for right. everybody listening. Yes, right. All right. So okay. Oh, look, we got we look, we got a freaking oh, we oh got it's, a, it's got the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me explain. I don't want to get too wonky with this, but I do believe in MMT. Um, this looks like but my what is world. it? Right. So what is modern monetary theory? Right. It posits that if the government controls its own currency, right, which, fiat currency, which you do, it's not backed by gold sure, anymore, sure. right? And it needs money. You know what we can do? Print it. We can print money. That's and right. even better, we don't print money. We go. We just we go, create it. We digitally. create it with a digitally. With a, That's they go right. The Federal Reserve goes on a nice little keyboard Whoop. and they make money, right? And right, this is like if you want to ensure the citizens have food or a place to live, or let's say a global pandemic totally uh, works. pushes many out of work, uh, you just. Print the money, and as long as the economy again has the ability to churn out the needed goods and services, right? So again, a lot of people try to attack uh, MMT because they say that folks just say inflation isn't real, but it's not. That's it's not the no, same no, thing. No, no, no. That, they've, they've, everything it's not I've Germany on this. printing Deutschmarks. No, it's not that. It's not that. And again, I would I would implore everybody to read her book. It's called The Deficit Myth. It was one of the more Enlightening books I've ever read. And again, it's just asking people to think differently. We're just asking. As long as production can keep up with the relative demand, there isn't really a gap. Exactly. That's yes. it. That's exactly it. But a lot of it, again, they pointed out, Axios pointed out, a lot of male economists were really up in arms about this Times profile. And they basically are saying, like, it's almost like a quick cure to cancer and. They, they, the way they panned if, it. If a lady found like some cure to cancer, yeah, some way to cure cancer in about five minutes for like everybody, do you think that like a bunch of dudes would be like, well, actually, no, have you really did any studies? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, and a bunch of them would die of like prostate cancer before they take it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> before they even figured it out. And again, I think it, it's, I just ask folks to look into it. Check it out. See what you think about it. All right. And create your own opinions on it because it talks deep into like these the pay for myth and just a lot of things in the government. They use like this deficit as, again, a political tool. And again, debt it's, ceiling. We're going to shut all down this, all this. Right. And I, I think her her piece on China and everybody's thought around like the Chinese owning our debt and things of that nature. They make an argument around that where that is tr it's true in a sense, but just again read through. But I think the biggest piece around this was that again it was a woman and it was a bunch of male economists that came out afterwards that was like, "Yo, wait a minute! Like, oh, this is this is the crackpot idea. What are you talking about?" And I think again it was mentioned that like you can have a debate about the substance, but they started to, they started veering off from the substance of this, and it was more kind of again a disdain of like the person who was saying it. 
So I understand. And again, the government can spend a lot of money and things. Again, inflation is inflation is happening the right now. The problem is that, no. Well, but inflation is happening. only kind of happening. It's happening. But another way is, to call inflation is to say that the people who produce goods should get paid for what the fuck they make. Okay. And that's that's really what we're talking about here. Yeah, that that's what they have been underpaid for what the fuck they've been making that we have been using for all of this time, and they should get paid for what they do. And I'm going to end it on this because, again, talking to the economics is not exciting. But again, the dismal science. It's dismal science, right? But even in the New York Times piece, she was out there basically saying, like, "Hey, no, no, no! Like this, what happened when we pumped a bunch of money in the economy um, with the bills that passed when the pandemic first hit was that, yo, no one really factored in what like inflation might look like. They didn't factor in any tax increases. There was no model save, for this. There was exactly literally no model for this. The country from a collapse. So, again, read the Times article. Um, read nobody, her book. nobody said it was wrong to spend money building tanks in World War II. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's just wasteful government spending, you know, causing inflation and all that stuff. What do we need all these tanks for? Yeah. And then on a side note, uh, California is suing Tesla because there's been a lot of allegations over there. Because the cars keep parking on railroad tracks. Or that and two in that one of their like factories was uh, known for like. Segregating workers and you know uh, racial discrimination. What? And they were had swastikas and they were saying the N word in the in the United States. This place. What? We Ooh. fought those people. Yeah, I thought we did. Black and white. Right. Well, a couple of the Tuskegee guys. <laughs> they had red tails. Red it's almost the football team. Okay, uh, let's move on to a subject called "This Ain't Happening." There we go. Now we're uh, let's. <laughs> Let's skip Canada because nobody cares about Canada. No, I think this is important to Canada real quick on there. Americans Americans have infiltrated Canada. Canada. Yes. Yes. (laughs) After stealing everything great from Canada, be it cheese or... uh, Look at this. Curling. We have, we have figured out how to send uh, Republicans with Confederate flags to Canada to pose as Canadians. Look at that guy. He's wearing a champion hat, and he has a full-on beard like me. And they are shutting down the various the border, is, border crossings in, in Windsor. Windsor is the only, part where you can, the only place where you can travel south from the United States to Canada. Did you know that? Interesting. Yeah, I if you go from Detroit to Windsor, you actually have to travel south, south. Wow. across the line. That's true. Uh, Canada, which uh, the prime minister is, is a nice moose named Justin uh, Trudeau. He was angry when I heard he him wa- talk. Yes. He was angry. And well, that's the most angry I've heard of. And Secretary of Defense uh, Goose was very angry about this whole thing. Uh, these truckers, they've shut everything down. They've shut it down. And I've heard that some wanted to do a January 6th type style thing in the Capitol. Yeah, well, they did. But they've run out of Labatt. So, you know. They, they, they've lost the will. The Confederate flag is making its way more and There's more north. A Confederate it, it flag can't go any more north. Flying in Canada. It can't go any more north. Well, it could get all the way across to Russia. <laughs> it's already there. So you're right. <laughs> the January 6th proved it. All right. Fuck Canada. Why do we like Canada? I don't like Canada. I like Canada. They have ham and they call it bacon. I'm, and they've got pink money. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's fine. I'm still mad at them. Also, they're not as good at curling as they think they are. Okay, there we go. Now we got deep. Now we we're into it. We figured it out. If Nina Roth had been on, or we're not getting into this. Okay. I'm mad about the, the mixed doubles whole thing. We're not doing that. Okay. Let's talk about uh, what happened in right-wing media this week. Ooh. Okay. So the Biden administration is a competent, basic, technocratic administration that wants people to, you know, live, survive. You say right wing media, but I'm going to I got a comment after that. Continue. Okay. Continue. Uh, so there is a government organization called SAMHSA. Uh, their their job is to manage. Uh, they're part of HHS. Their job is to manage uh, addictive drugs and other such things. And they oh, we're out, managing addictions now. Well, we, we're trying to, you know, help the people. war on drugs is over. No. OK. We're Sorry. prosecuting the war on drugs. By. Mm, oh, the Sacklers. That was no, I'm sorry, dude. Different, different war. On drugs. Sorry. 
Sorry. It's many fronts. Gotcha. So Western front, and then there's a Western front. Mm. And then an Eastern and a, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So basically, <laughs> SAMHSA's job is to try to, like, reduce drug deaths in the country. And so they put out this thing asking for uh, grant applications for organizations, whether they be state, municipal, or faith-based, or community-based, whatever, uh, for, for harm reduction. Harm reduction is a term that... that encompasses a wide range of of things but it it basically says look we understand that people are addicted to drugs we're probably not going to get them to stop cold turkey but what we don't want them to do is die of other things that are associated with that right whether that's Dirty hiv needles, infections yeah, exactly. or you know other kinds of like you know mishaps from overdoses or whatever so harm reduction they put out this grant they said uh who wants to get some of this money for harm reduction and they put down these guidelines of things that could qualify as harm reduction. Right. And they're mostly things like needle exchanges, right. safe places for people to go and use where they're observed by medical professionals, counseling, you know, methadone clinics, all that kind of stuff. And down there on the bottom of the list of 20 some odd things was this thing that said safe smoking kits. I think it was. Something, yeah, it was like right there. Something like that. Something like that. It was a kit for smoking. Yeah. Well, Fox News somehow turned this into Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, because of course they had to add that, are giving away crack pipes for Black History Month. Now, that's objectively untrue and ridiculous and stupid and offensive and fuck all. But somehow it recycled back around onto black Twitter and I saw black Twitter going, oh, it's this insane. is the level that we've achieved. Look at us with uh, Kamala getting us free crack pipes. Thanks, Uncle Joe. And it's like, I don't, I, we don't even have time to go into this, but it's almost like a crazy timeline of, right. Are we Uncle Tomming ourselves? It's is that, not, is it's that just what happened? Kinda, it, it, it's just really deep because, right, it's. Crime bill that folks are still upset about. It's also twenty five years later. Twenty five years later, it's because it's a bad approach to to the war on drugs, which it, it was. It is what it is. Folks signed it, and and again, there wasn't a lot of information being passed on. But and again, that could be a whole talk fucking to Charlie Rangel about how that really went down. That could be a whole a lot of argument. Yeah, Newt Gingrich fucked New it Gang, up. Yeah, exactly. It could be a whole hour and a half conversation on what really happened there. Um, it's that. It's also along with a. A misconception of the executive branch and like, do we think we're in a monarchy? And right, yeah, they can I don't do, know. They and, and issue things by fiat. It's also that the vice presidents. It seems that their her team isn't really good, and it just it troubles me because I I don't I feel very weird about having that conversation. And the Nazis tried to bomb her husband. And they tried to bomb her husband at Dunbar lately. at a black high school, and, it's and he's just, Jewish. And and also too, it's like. We always hear for these fucking jokes because life is hard. And, and, and something, and, something, crack baby, something, yo, something, Maury show, something, something. And it, there's so much that really goes into that. I, I do, I am a little worried, specifically on this issue and how we kind of grabbed that on black Twitter and ran. Because I started seeing it and I was like, oh my God. I was like, wait, wait, but could, it's sometimes like we can't have these like, jokes. Can't you know that the, I want to have those you, you jokes. Look at the, you, I, yeah, yeah, I, I we should have be able to have the jokes. I want to have the funny. fucking jokes, man. Look at our success. Shit. I, we got yo, free crack pipes. Yo, I want like, I wish we could have it. Chappelle said it. Sprinkle some crack on him. Exactly. Let's get out of here. I right? wish we could have it, but it's just. But now he hates affordable housing. It, it, it it just gets really tricky. I think another one is too, like more so. And this is this country is good at handling nuance. It'll be it, fine. Nuance is really hard here, <laughs> and I see this again with with the right quote unquote spike in crime when it's the safest you've ever fucking been. I'm sorry. Like I mean, I'm from I'm from the District of Columbia. I remember when it was. It, it's been a lot less safe. Okay. Yeah. And also too, like. Making policy when you're we afraid. We have more kids uh, dying from car accidents. Yeah, than than shootings. And I understand, Muriel. That, I understand that if you're getting carjacked, or yo, you're a victim of gun violence. It doesn't feel safe. But I, I guess I tie these in together that we got to just be really careful 
on how we present some of this stuff um, because we're at, really at a risk. I'm. You, I talked to you on the phone the other day. I'm very afraid of the 2024 crime bill. Yes, I, I'm very afraid of this. I'm a little less afraid of it because of you know what I look like. But yeah, 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 yeah. I'm afraid. I mean, I'm afraid of it in real life. Because I'm just not in, afraid of it personally. At least in DC, I see that there's a. a, a there's two factions that might be coming together or something. Starting to get the the old black folks, old black folks joining and, up and with new the white, white folks, folks yeah. around crime. Yeah, and again, and, and yo, I don't go too deep into this, but like Ag Carr, I seen yo, he came out with a statement, and I think they talked about it today, where he was just like, "What my office will not do is we will not go back to old policies to just lock people up." Good. We'll, we'll and again, if why you is run, he not running? Why is he not running? Because I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe the job is hard and maybe it's tiring. I'd move, I'd and move back and vote for him. And I just I just think it's one of those things where you just got to be really careful because they say right the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and, and expecting, expecting different, different results. results, right? And I think again we've tried this at least in my lifetime once in the early nineties. I think I saw it again in the early two thousands, and I feel like we're coming around to doing it again. If Tony Williams shows up again. It's all over. Tony Williams is more worried about the business. He just wants to make sure well, the okay. businesses are good. If, but yes, if Fenty shows up again. No, he's okay too because okay, he's just, all right. He's, you he's just make an excuse. Yeah, I know. I'm making an excuse for everybody. Right? The fucking dog parks. Yeah, with the dog. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just be really like again. I understand folks are afraid, but do. But do you think I'm not afraid? I have a child. I want right. uh, that, that's we a quote do from, the right thing. That's a quote from uh, Titanic when you right. try to get on the boat. I have a child. Um, but <laughs> is that right? Was that Billy Zane? Do the right uh, thing. <laughs> right. I just is your fear any greater than mine? Well, like, and here's my thing. I don't wish this on myself, right? And my girlfriend probably hate this right now. But like, if for whatever reason I was a victim of any of this new up and up violence, right? Quote unquote. Quote unquote violence, right? Right, prosecute whoever might have done that to me, but we can't we can't use that as we can't govern in fear. We do not govern to the exception. Not nah, right. We, can't we be govern that. to the trend, we govern to the data, we govern to the rule. Yeah. We do not govern to the exception. I'm not saying criminals should go free, but I'm just like Maybe Look we at should. what happened with Willie Horton, right? You find yeah, this we, we one example sample. and you turn it into this, the, like, well, this is happening all over the place. No, the fuck it isn't. And I still, I still believe people with resources and access to whether it's uh, health care, whether it's uh, groceries, groceries um, jobs, like... I think it's I, I think it's simple, and I think there's data that shows that those folks, when given that opportunity, will choose that opportunity. And will there be people who want to choose crime? Yeah, that's how it works. But just not to, very many. But not very many. And I just think we just need to be really careful about that. Because I have access to all the other things, and I don't go, you know what? Crime. You know, ch- I'm going to quit my job and start crime. Crime. Yeah, I don't want to hear. Yeah. I mean, you know, I joined the Trump administration. <laughs> <and> start <laughs> yeah, crime, crime. Yeah, right. Writing. Speaking of which, Stephen Miller said that uh, it's it's not fair that black and brown people got some COVID tests. For real, he was very upset about that. That that states like Minnesota, which has a six percent population, six percent black <laughs> population, and eleven percent uh, black folks dying of COVID, was like, hey, we ought to pay attention to like race when we're handing out these COVID tests. And so Stephen Miller sued them uh, for being racist against white people who got the vast majority of COVID tests. Because America's great. Also, too, don't let these don't let these job numbers fool you. The women are getting shut out of the goddamn job of market. Of course they are. And it's not a good thing at all. They have to make lunch while they have a PhD. <sighs> What? It's just like the You're laughing at me like it's not true. No, that's also like the the immigrants we bring over here. They have to right. make lunch and they have a fucking PhD. They're that's doctors right. and they, shit. They and are doctors in their own countries. countries. And then they come here and we don't recognize their credentials because people in Mongolia are different from people in the United States. And your ability to diagnose a person in Azerbaijan is different from your ability to diagnose a person in Georgia. I mean, I, I, you know, I can work on motors and electricity, controls, cars, things like that. But not in those metric countries. Because <laughs> everything's different over there somehow. This is an insane show. I Isn't that? Every, 
a bit of this. Uh, Please come here if you have some sort of marketable skill. I so, And again, if you don't have skills and you like to have sex and make babies, that works too. We need that because we can teach the babies. <laughs> hey, yo. Can we teach your babies to do air conditioning? Because we need that. It's about to get really hot. This is... This is <laughs> This is an insane place because air conditioning, just in general, almost everybody has air conditioning in in the states. In the states, yeah, it, but not in the in the the southern half of the world where it's actually hot. Oh my god! Yeah, privilege is destroying. Us. That's why I'm an HVAC man by trade. All right, here's the music. Uh, we've come to the end of the show. Uh, we want to say show. thanks to our radio partners. Uh, Google, Amazon, Joe Rogan, whatever else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to NOTN for keeping us on uh, for Twice another week. week. Uh, <laughs> thanks to our digital media, Mofongo. Oh, I like, uh, yeah, yeah, I like, hey. I like Mofongo. Yeah, that's that for my Puerto Rican uh, brothers. Keyway in Baltimore. Thanks Keyway. to our home on the interwebs, Coplay Media. And thanks, as always, to our family here at Rip Radio for making it sound as smooth as Dave Chappelle discussing affordable housing. All right, where can everybody get you on the social medias? In affordable housing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not even a joke. Not in D.C. <laughs> not, no, it's not a joke. I am no. affordable. I, right. yeah, you I, are, I, you I, qualify I, as affordable? Well, no. Well, I used to. But yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, and I, and they factored in. They but, bulldozed it. But no, I did. I I got into a, a condo through You're an an affordable ADM. yeah yeah through That's HPAP it. and uh, IZ so I do not stand with you Dave Chappelle That's on this right. one here you might cut Nimby be the next that people hate Muriel but at least she didn't do that right she wasn't against that yet. you can find me on yet no 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 it's an election year yeah her she's such a good politician I know it's kind of insane because she just brings out we got Lidl's popping we gotta up. get her they on got, the show they got, they, got, they, got, they got grocery stores popping up places in food deserts yeah it's insane they've what's got three year leases <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. You can find me talking about this and other random shit uh, at, at DC Cortez on Twitter and posting very little photos on uh, Instagram at Ketchum Corey. I'm going to do better this year on posting photos. Yeah, you photos. should work on that. I have a lot of pictures. I'm going to do a photo. You though. should go ahead. All right. You can That's what it's for, right? Not find find so the show. The fucking nation. That's right. You can find the show and me on Twitter at Chip Chat RR because I got thrown off from my other one at Chip uh, Chef Chip. Which wasn't disinformation. It wasn't. And different disinformation. I love uh, Ted Cruz. You can find the show uh, on Facebook or Instagram at Rip Chip Chat, and you can find us, of course, every Thursday night here on Rip Radio at nine thirty. I'm Chip. That says you've been listening to Chip Chat on Rip Radio Network. Proletariat unite, yo. Yo. <laughs>